Hi right, guys, we've been waiting a while for these, pretty excited about them. These are the new Fermentosauruses, uh, made down in Victoria by a company called Oxibar. Um, they're a conical fermenter, but they have a couple of differences that make them a bit different from anything else on the market. Uh, the biggest one is the fact that they're pressurizable. So, when we sell them, we sell them with this pressure kit. It has, it basically looks like your standard corny keg on top. Um, you've got a release valve, liquid and gas uh, disconnect posts uh, and also the uh, dip tube has a float on it so when we have that floating in our brew it's always going to be sucking up the top of the brew which is the, the clearest part uh, while you're waiting for it to clarify. And I'm just going to go through it quickly so this has all come out of the, the box uh, it's all been uh, sanitized. Now, the first thing to do is that the stand actually goes around this way. We've got carry handles to make it a bit easier to move around. And this is going to be the height of your unit once it's set up. So it's about 900 millimeters top to bottom. Now, take all the parts, all these bits that come in and sanitize them all. You're going to have two different lids. One of them is just, if you're going to use it as a standard fermenter, it just has a single hole in it and it fits an airlock into it. So that is what you can use as a standard gravity fed fermenter. Um, most of you, I would imagine, especially if you've got kegs, are going to be using the pressure, the pressure kit. Um, after you've sanitized it all, you also want to go around and any of these parts that have a rubber o-ring or a seal on them just get a bit of food grade lubricant or vaseline and just uh, cover them in a little bit of vaseline it's going to keep them a lot longer and it will give you a better seal as well now to put this together you're going to take this little part here which goes on the base this is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing you need to line it up with the bottom, drop it in and give it a shake if it doesn't quite fit, then grab hold of it, sorry, you need to put this part onto it, so you need to grab hold of it, flip it over and then give that a spin. It's actually the opposite to any normal thread. So it's a left hand thread rather than a right hand thread to tighten. Which will feel a bit strange but it's because the other part, the butterfly valve that goes on the bottom, goes the opposite direction. So otherwise you'd be loosening up the thread when you put it together. So once you've got your butterfly valve on, you can put your collection bottle. Now, to start with during your primary fermentation, this is what's going to collect the trub in it. Uh, after you've filled this with trub, you can close the valve, remove it, tip it out. Ideally, put some CO2 in it, reconnect it and reopen the valve and then you'll have uh, your brew with most of the trub removed. You can then cold crash it and this will collect some viable yeast for your next brew. Um, where to go from here? The lid. So, one other little thing that will be a bit tricky when you first get it is that this piece of silicon tubing needs to go on the outside of the liquid dip post and also on the outside of this part of the float. Um, if you warm it up in a bit of warm water, it will make it a little bit easier. But you just need to to get it to the right shape and push it on. It took us a couple of minutes. Uh, you'll then, again, put some lubricant around the edge of this seal on the O-ring, and that, after you put the water in, simply drops on top, and you screw on it. And there you have it. That's your complete conical flask, uh, conical fermenter. Now, of course, the other great thing about these is that if you have a fridge big enough to fit this in, 
after you've finished fermenting, after you've clarified, you can put the whole thing into the fridge. It's pressurizable up to 35 psi, so you can carbonate in this, and because you've got the posts on top, you can simply attach your little regulator, attach your tap, and away you go. You've got a keg as well. You can serve straight from this vessel. Of course, you can also connect your regulator or your gas line to the gas, connect a disconnect with a line to a keg, and do a keg to keg transfer. You can also do a keg to keg transfer through a filter, uh, a lot easier than just using gravity because you can push the brew through using pressure from your CO2. And that's about it. I think we're going to throw a brew in here and see how it comes out.